Okay, now recording started. So I will check afterwards to make sure this one is really recorded. This is the first time. Okay, let me go back. Sorry about that. Yeah, then um, we're supposed to post this on YouTube. So I need to learn how to do that. Um, okay, let's continue. Um, okay, so uh, we uh, want to make high level discussions on what it means to do data protection and how to achieve that. Uh, and also we want to have some uh, more detailed design discussions on specific, specific things that we want to do um, to um, fill those gaps in data protection support. And we want to um, create documents, make them available. So uh, here are some potential design topics. Um, okay, before I go, before I continue, are there any questions? Comments? Okay. Um, I'll just go go over the the topics, potential topics, right? So here, uh, listed there are potential topics, meaning they could change, they could be more, they could be less, right? Based on what we think are needed. So the first one is read data from snapshot without creating a new volume. Uh, so right now we do have snapshot functionality. We can create a new volume from the snapshot. Um, but here what it says, okay, is it possible just to, to read from the data from the snapshot directly without create a new volume, make it more efficient? So uh, that's something we can look at. And the second one, uh, volume backups. So uh, we do have volume snapshots, but that really mean you take a snapshot and then your snapshot uh, is on the local storage together with your volume. Uh, for some cloud providers, that may be different, but in general, that's the case. So volume backups, meaning that you back it up to a different device, which is separate from your primary storage. Uh, and data populator, so this is uh, uh, something that has been discussed in SIG storage. Um, basically, this would allow you to look at an external data source like S3 or uh, GitHub repo and create a PVC out of that. Yeah, this is something I'm working on. Okay, awesome. It uh, has many applications, but, ba but restoring backups is one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so this will be a great topic. Um, and the next one, retrieve divs, they turn to snapshots. So this is, a, I think a lot of backup vendors are asking for this, how to uh, get the divs between two snapshots to, so that this is a more efficient uh, way of uh, doing backups. Uh, and then the next yeah, one is- I've got a quick question for you. The, of course. I'm not sure I understand the first one. The first one. Oh, read data from a snapshot without creating a new volume? Yeah. How, uh, okay. how is that used in this context? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, this one is some, someone brought this up, I think. Uh, we don't really have any uh, design for this one. So basically, uh, so currently you could uh, uh, create a new volume from, so that's like a whole volume, right? Uh, and then, uh, this is read data from snapshot, meaning that you can actually just directly, like you can mount the snapshot and the read from it directly. So you don't have to go create another volume from it. Make what it happens? faster. What, huh? what is the purpose of reading from a snapshot? I mean, what's the use? Oh, oh, for, oh, for backup. This is for backup. Yeah, so this is whole, everything is related to backup, right? So if you do, uh, so right now to do a backup, you have to, you have to create a, uh, for actually restore, right? Backup and restore, I should say. When you do a, when you do a, um, uh, restore, you will have to create a, you, you will have to create a new volume. Uh, when you do a backup, you also have to create a new volume okay. right now. Right? I think I understand. So this is a case where you could create a snapshot and then leverage that existing snapshot into a backup by just reading the snapshot directly and writing it to an external location. Is that the Correct. idea? Correct. Yes. The, the yes. other, 
the other use case would be like if I just wanted to read one file out of the snapshot instead of restoring the whole thing because I only only lost or only corrupted one small piece of my volume and I want to. Uh, so a sub volume uh, selective restore. Something like that from, from, that, a, from a snapshot, right? Oh, yeah. but if you said one file, do you mean this uh, snapshot only contains this one file because we don't really differentiate here? No, no. Like, like if, 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 if I only lost one file out of my volume and I have a snapshot, I may just want to go read that file out of the snapshot to get it back rather than creating oh, a Oh, oh okay, snapshot. I see. Yeah, okay. So the, that, right. that, that implies, I guess, then that you can uh, assume a file system semantic over the snapshot? Uh -huh. No, no. I mean, yeah, that, if you had a generic facility for attaching to snapshots, then that would be something you could do if you happen to have a file system volume and you happen to have a snapshot and you happen to want to, I mean, you know, it would be a very use case specific. Right. I think this is probably very specific for the, for the file based. Mm, yeah, but you can, you can do things like you could mount the snapshot. I think it's definitely a topic. Yeah. Uh -huh. to yeah, yeah. So how do we get sub volume or partial re restores? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, th yeah, that's all I was really asking. The rest of these have fairly obvious um, sort of use cases, and I just didn't understand the use case for this. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, yeah, the first one. Um, okay, so probably should expand this one a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, we could, we, well, potentially, there's no design that, but potentially we could, you know, mount that snapshot, right, and then make that available, then we could do either read directly from the, for the whole thing or part, part of it. Yeah, I guess that's the use case. Okay. Uh, next one is consistency volume groups, the group snapshot. Uh, so uh, this also is something that we have been working in six storage. So I'm actually right now working on a cap on this one and allow you to uh, uh, group volumes together, manage them together, and take a snapshot of this uh, multiple volumes instead of just uh, one. And the next one, application snapshot backup recovery. So uh, uh, CE9 is uh, also on the call. He has a cap for, for this, allow you to snapshot a whole application and uh, recover it. Uh, and I think there's also backup the backup part, I think that's uh, probably need another cap, right? You know, I think it's a, this one is a pretty, pretty big cap actually. Uh, yes, it's on. Uh, it's actually partially completed, um, mm -hmm. so um, we we'll probably need to expand that to include backup support as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the next one, uh, data protection policy. Uh, so we don't really have uh, any design for this one. Um, but I think somebody uh, brought this up. And also uh, uh, some time ago, Jing actually did some POC of this using the metadata controller to do periodic snapshots. Uh, so this could in involve periodic backups, uh, making a schedule for that or uh, set retention policy um, to automatically clean up the old backups, set topology to, set, uh, to specify backup location or it could, it could include other things. Um, and the, the, the last one is data production workflows. Um, so I think this one would be related to our high level discussions on you know, what it means and how to do it. And then we could come up with uh, work, some workflows on how to do it. Any questions before we move to the next? I had a quick question. So what's a yeah. data populator? Can you repeat that again, please? Oh, data yeah. So uh, uh, there is a, uh, I, can, I can add a link. Oh, actually, I don't think we have anything that, that is really, really uh, <laughs> uh, clearly written yet. But I think there is a Google Docs somewhere. Uh, basically, the idea is to, uh, allow allow you to use some external data source. So, so currently, uh, you can use either a volume snapshot or a PVC as a data source to create a uh, to create a new PVC. This one says uh, that's also open up to allow and allow for other sources. Uh, like if you have a S3, uh, you have an S3 bucket, you could read data from there and uh, you know uh, put them in a and then create a volume from that. Or if you have a GitHub repo, you can read from there. And uh, 
uh, copy those data in a new volume. So that's the idea. Yeah, I, I guess also a key thing here is the existing mechanism requires a change to the core Kubernetes um, data type every time you would have a new data source. So the idea here, I think, is that you introduce an intermediate level of a thing, which is sort of a data populator, and then you could indirect the data populator to have lots of different sources for the data. So it allows for an evolution path that doesn't require changing the PVC definition every time you want to add a new data source. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think this one, yeah. Uh, I think the challenge is mainly the, I think the, the API uh, reviewer, uh, I'm not sure, at, at least that was in, in the beginning when we added the snapshot support, right? we added that first source, so we were asked to make it super, super strict <laughs> that you cannot allow this one source. And then next time we open it up for cloning, which is at the PVC source. So, so, so we'll see what, what they say. <laughs> so the, there are other ways of doing that that don't require like the data populator being the data source. Um, I, I'm trying to work on the, the proposal, mm -hmm. but, um, but my proposal is that you, allows you to put arbitrary CRDs in the data source field of a PVC and have the controller do the right thing. Uh, but you would still be leveraging the data source field, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so the the required changes you stop but, validating that field and just say, you know what, put whatever but, you want in there. And and if it's a volume or a snapshot, the appropriate CSI sidecar will handle it. And if it's something else, the appropriate something else will handle it. And if it's something nobody's ever heard of, it'll just sit there and nothing will happen. Right. I guess the the the, the question is the this something that what is this a third type that you were you were talking about this still that's like a that can be anything type of thing right yeah it can be a crd it can be it's basically it's a uh unknown or it can it's yeah, not the, like a fix not a fixed thing basically not a fixed definition i guess that's the that was the concern before i i don't know maybe, maybe things change they maybe they change their mind the the, the, the type of the, the 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 field in the pvc which is the data source is an arbitrary kubernetes object Mm -hmm. And the, the only thing that limits what it can be is the validator that says, if it's not a volume or a snapshot, we delete it. But mm -hmm. if you remove that validation, it can be anything. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Oh, that yeah. sounds like a good topic for discussion. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, definitely. That's definitely a, this is a um, good topic. Yeah. So let's finish this. Um, uh, and then out of scope. Um, basically, uh, there are things that because we are... Uh, like cross SIG apps and and the SIG storage, um, but there are topics that are very specific in SIG storage that we may not be interested. Like uh, migrate migrate entry drivers to CSI drivers. That's going to be a very specific topic for data protection. Uh, or uh, like seeing SIG apps, they are doing some design on workflow APIs. Then you know then may we we may need to make some changes there, but the main design will be owned by the SIG apps, so things like that. Uh, and also, uh, I uh, this one, I want to uh, make sure everyone understand that the working group does not own code, only SIG own code. Uh, so we will have discussions, we will do design discussions um, on the cap, we can, we can discuss caps and review caps, um, but the cap approval and the code implementation, that's still owned by SIG apps and SIG storage. We can talk about that, that it's owned by the six. Uh, and then the, the third one is that this is actually something uh, came up during the, uh, the review uh, when, we were when we were trying to uh, form this working group. Uh, there appears to be some uh, confusion on the definition of data protection, because if you search in Google, uh, you, Google uh, then, then you, will, uh, you will see that it talks about not only uh, backup and recover aspect of it, but it also talked about this uh, security and privacy part. Um, so uh, here we just uh, uh, say that this is uh, important, but that's not the focus of this working group because we are focusing on the backup and uh, recovery aspect of it. Uh, so stakeholders, you know, SIG apps and SIG storage, and uh, also, any backup vendors, storage vendors uh, who are building product on it, and also uh, application developers um, and users who are using data protection applications. 
they are all stakeholders. Uh, also, uh, the disband criteria that we're required to put in there, basically saying, okay, we need to, uh, we're working on all the things that are, we listed in the in scope section and we need to produce some documents. Uh, and then if we completed everything and there's nothing more to discuss and investigate, then, then at that time, we probably should just disband. So that's the charter. Any questions? Shin, I, I, yes. I, guess, I, I bet that's Ben that posted a, a question on the doc saying the uh, reviewing the snapshot API. W was that you, Ben? Nope. Where? I'm sorry. Uh, in our the, doc. Uh, San Diego action items, first action San, working group. San Diego? What? Yeah. What do you mean? San no, Diego? Where? Those are, those are mine. That's from the, we had the pre-meeting, remember? So these oh. are the action items that we were going to handle based on yeah. that. Oh, okay, okay. I, oh, I, oh, oh, the meeting is it in the meeting notes. I haven't, I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't uh, go to, okay, so so we can go, okay. I think, okay, I'm done with the, uh, yeah, with, with the charter review. So, so let's see, what do we have now? Uh, go with the charter, clarify the first, okay, so, so okay, those are the notes. Um, no more other questions. Are there no more other questions? Oh, those yeah. are just your notes? No, that's Dave's note. I, I would like oh, okay. To San Diego action. What I sent. Okay, first item for review the. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so basically those are the things that uh, we can uh, continue to uh, to work on in this working group, right? So there are things that we discussed before that we haven't done yet, and we could uh, discuss here. Review the storage snapshot APIs. You mean the review of the beta APIs? Is that what that means? Yes. Okay. So one of the goals in forming this group was to get some more input on this whole data protection subject and the snapshot APIs and the use of those. So um, this is Dave Smith Uchida from VMware. I've been kind of leading the, the, the setup of this group because we had, we, there were definitely things that didn't uh, work for VMware. And I wanted to make sure that we had as many different inputs in here as possible. And so that's why we brought in, for example, all the data protection vendors, Veritas, Veeam, um, et cetera, Dell EMC, um, to start having some input on this as well. Yeah, I guess, I guess the only, the reason why you hear that hesitation in my voice is at this point, I mean, the beta API now has that, has the, the beta, association right so we can't like throw it out and do something new are you are you talking I don't think we're going to throw it out and then do something new but if it don't work it don't work for us so we may have to make changes and add things so that it works for more people uh yeah so i, I kind of uh, know uh, the the limitations that they point to so there's one one okay do, do we want to talk about that now or with other with i guess other the question thinking? is what's the next step to proceed? Because we're gonna to have to pick uh, a topic at a time and go. Yeah, yeah, so let's, uh, you know what, let's just uh, uh, list the topics and then, uh, and then we can go through them today and then if we cannot finish today, we, that will go to the next meeting, right? I'm, pre I'm pretty sure there are a lot of uh, topics. So instead of uh, diving, uh, diving into this particular one right now, so let's just list all the potential topics and then we can, uh, we can uh, start go going through them. So the list that was in the charter, is that a not exhaustive list or not detailed enough list? Obviously it's not detailed. I think that's a good, yeah, that, that's a very good list actually. We could definitely, uh, we could definitely just start from here. Yeah, so those I are because- The only thing that's missing from this is the review of the existing snap. Uh, yeah. that, 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 that's okay, yeah. Um, so that one we could, uh, we could also talk about that uh, sometime. So uh, I have some ideas because there are, we got feedbacks, right? Um, but I don't think we're going to do like a dramatic change, but maybe fix some of the of the bugs or the, some of those are designed uh, that way. So we'll just look at those and see if, uh, if there are any solutions, um, but not that n not necessarily have to be um, the focus because there are a lot of topics here, right? Um, okay, so... Um, so should we uh, go look at this uh, this list of topics? Uh, should we kind of vote and then decide 
which one to to talk about next? How long, how long does it take to set up a vote? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how to set it, actually. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe that's what we should discuss is how do we get things done? How are we going to move things forward? I mean, I think we've got a biweekly meeting, so that can certainly be, you know, some time for discussion, but we should probably, I don't know, have some people who go ahead and take a topic and run with it for a while, or what's the right way to do this? I was going to propose that, that the way these things tend to get done is whoever is willing to do the heavy lifting and the work tends to drive things forward. And so whatever topic has the most interest in people actually doing things will, will inevitably move faster than the rest of them. Okay, so let's just go over those topics because I know some of those already have owners, right? Others have not, right? So let's just, uh, I'm going to go over just, a, uh, I, I just look at those that I know or have an owner. Um, so I'm currently working on voting groups. Um, and then I know E9 is working on application snapshot backup and recovery. So we have volume backup work going on in my team. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, Xiangqian, are you taking notes? I am. Maybe list those and then just write down who are you know, potentially owning each, each one. And then, yeah. The Valero, um, the Valero team is also doing um, volume backups and has been for a while. Yeah, I, I think okay. there's, there's several implementations of, a, of backup already. <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure many more being more like, like I have I have a couple different prototypes of backup, neither of which I'm happy with, but, um, you know. Yeah, I, I would love to be, because one of the things that strikes me is that we have two kinds of things here. Th things where um, multiple folks will have to write to a standard and things where there's a separate functionality that can be driven kind of by one. And the volume backup one strikes me as kind of like volume snapshots is going to need lots of of sort of working out of how this might work without necessarily kind of the the storage level implementation, if that makes sense. And so that's one where I think we can we can tackle it at an API level pretty deeply and work through it that way without necessarily having to have um, an implementation put forward as the straw man, if you know what I mean. Oh, I have both if you want them. <laughs> 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 we, we should certainly sit down and discuss, Ben. Yeah, so Excuse it sounds me? like so it sounds like there are like multiple uh, API designs for volume backup. So we need to definitely uh, sync up, make sure they are in sync, right? With <laughs> one, two, three <laughs> volume well, backup APIs. Right? Is maybe we can start with some principle statements and get mm -hmm. make sure we all agreed on on some basic principles, and then we can. If somebody then has APIs that meet all of those principles, we can put those forward and discuss them. But okay. my guess is we're going to argue on some of the principles. <laughs> and rather okay. than arguing all the way in the API, we can argue on the sort of some of the more fundamental things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, we, we need to make sure we're trying to solve the same problem. Because if we're yeah. trying to solve different problems, we won't agree on the solution for sure. OK, yeah. Yep, that makes sense. So I'm certainly willing to draw up a little doc with my, our view of sort of some of those principles and maybe we can, as a discussion, kind of go through what several folks provide for that because I'm assuming other folks would be able to do the same for like the next meeting, maybe. That sounds good. And by the way, it, because I know Ben is working on data populator, right? I, I think that yeah. that could be an interesting going work. Yeah, I, between, yeah. yeah, certainly I don't expect that anything that I, would suggest in the principles would in any way disallow for a data population. No, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, so I, I only mentioned the data populator stuff because I am, you know, trying to propose a cap for the Kubernetes 118 timeframe uh, with, with my ideas, and I don't know how far we'll go, um, but I don't want to wait um, and allow the perfect to be the enemy of the good. So I'm trying to pursue that right now before the 118 deadline. When is the 118 deadline again? Two weeks away. Uh, Two weeks away. About 10 days or 11 days. So no, before our next meeting. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to have that cap merged before that, by 28th. 
Uh, ben, by the way, uh, I, if you uh, need anything, uh, I'm willing to work with you with regarding to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm assuming you're you're gonna you're gonna file the cap then, and we will comment on it then offline. Is yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put out a, a a POC and a cap and a schedule a meeting, and then pray that people find the idea appealing. Uh, and if not, go back to the drawing board. Well, that that strikes me as then sort of an obvious thing to work on between now and the next meeting. And then the other thing to work on is some fleshed out volume backup. That's a lot of stuff. I don't know if we'll have more time. Well, I, I, I was surprised that this meeting was proposed to be uh, semi-weekly because. It, it, no, it's bi-weekly, <laughs> not semi-weekly. <laughs> well, what does yeah. that mean? Every bi other week? Bi-weekly, uh, yes. <laughs> so, so oh, yeah. every, every two weeks. That's usually, okay, well, the, usually this type of meetings are bi-weekly. What, what do you expect it to be happening more often or what, what is your expectation? Well, yeah. for, for, for a working group with this amount of stuff to do, we need more bandwidth. Oh, so, so yeah, yeah if, uh, I, I don't want to make that a like required for everybody. So if we uh, want to do more, then we can schedule additional meetings. That's definitely no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the, the idea, Ben, is that this whole big working group is gonna to meet bi-weekly, whereas a specific domain area, for example, volume backup or data populate or volume group, feel free to schedule as many meetings as you want it. Right? We just don't want to call this like thirty plus engineer or, or people or PMs meeting you know one big room and discussing everything right so okay. that, that's uh, I, I understand so so we do plan to have breakout with more frequent more frequent meetings that's right well i mean let's 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 talk about planning because we're all kind of new at forming this working group thing so this is something as a group that we should be talking about how are we going to work together and i we're, we're up for more meetings you know if we're, if we're actually getting work done and uh, there's nobody who's like the mastermind of working groups in here, I don't think. Is there anybody who's <laughs> Not me, yeah. in at least. Is there no. anybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So normally, well, so normally the working group, uh, yeah, it's, it's like this, right? So you have something you have to work up. Not like everything will be uh, discussed only in this bi-weekly. Uh, if, uh, if even there's a deadline, you do have to have additional meetings just to sort out those issues, right? And it happens like, especially this is the first meeting, we have so many things <laughs> listed here, but doesn't mean like everything, we can do everything in, in a month, that's not possible, right? So yeah. uh, we just need to look at you know, who, are, who are interested and then, then based on that, and then we can uh, decide what are the priorities. Like I'm already signed up for, this one group thing, E9 is already, he, he has signed up for application snapshots. So there are already quite a few things. Uh, it's already in progress. Okay. Um, so I, I have uh, kind of an initial thought on this as well. Um, before I discussed with you, Shin, before mm -hmm. as well on this. Yeah. It, it's basically this big working group is going to have bi weekly updates from everybody. Uh, however, internally, we can still form smaller ones and have leaders on, on each of these smaller areas so that it doesn't require everybody yeah. to participate, right? unless you're interested, of course. And then yeah. we, we can kind of, you know, uh, form a more healthier uh, moving forward in the future. That's basically yeah. what I was So, uh, Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I also, I think in this, in this meeting, we can also have time for design discussions if we have time, right? So that's sure. uh, normally I see in other, uh, I think every uh, single working group would work differently. Uh, so like here, uh, we can also have a, a section for uh, design discussions, like in sixth origin, there is a section for that, but usually we probably don't have much time because in that meeting we went over the status. Um, but here we 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 can actually um, we can have um, a, a section for design discussions. So um, depending on the depending on how many time we have, and then if we don't have enough time, then that can we can have follow up meetings to discuss specific issues. That sounds reasonable. Good, you know. Okay. So yeah. So so okay. So now we know we have okay. okay so we have holding backups to the populator. Uh, yeah, I'm really interested in working on the data protection workflows. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So the yeah. So the and also the high level one, right? So the high level discussions and also the data. Or those two, I think, go hand by hand. By hand. The high level discussions on what it means, what you do, and the data protection workflows. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's how we, that's we can good, actually yeah. validate we're doing the right thing in the APIs. Yeah. That's a yeah. That's a good uh, good one. Yeah. So this one would be uh, some documentation uh, describe how to do things. Yeah. I think yeah. They, they, uh, they uh, if you don't mind, I'll work with you on this topic. Actually, I'm very interested in this as well. That's great. I'd love, because uh, we, we really need to think of, think them all through. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hi, Xing, this is uh, Raghu yeah. from Catalogic Software. Can you add this yeah, support for incremental backups as one of the items? I don't uh, see that. So that's, that's, this, that's like this, uh, well, okay. Yeah, it's not, not, well, so that would be, be, under volume backups, if you talk about incremental backups, so when you do backups and it was full backup and it was incremental backups, so it should be a sub uh, topic under volume backups. So here we have this uh, uh, diffs between two snapshots that, that you can use. That's probably maybe not a sub of volume backups. Also, um, yeah. do, we, do we start exposing additional data paths? Uh, so that, yeah, so that's part of the, but if you do voting backups, then it's probably is natural to do incremental. Yeah, I guess, I guess yeah. the question is, is when, when with the, the person who asked the question, when you meant, when you said incremental backups, did you mean a backup oh. whose image is partial and designed to be built with others? Or do you mean really the diffs between two snapshots thing? Uh, not between this. Okay, let, let me just explain that question a little bit further. So when I look at this list, I see some of the items uh, that may not require API level changes. Uh, for example, the volume backup is such a, a generic domain uh, that uh, even today people are doing volume backups, right? They're just mounting the file system and copying the file. So you have volume backups in some sense. You don't really need uh, any API level support, strictly speaking. On the other hand, uh, if you talk about consistency volume groups, these are the things that you need support from the a CSI. Uh, my view is that we should be talking more about those things that you need support yeah. from the API. Your, your definition of volume backups and mine are different because yes, by volume backups, certainly I did not, I did not intend to mean copying the full copy of the, of the data as seen from the, from the client OS, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. it, it's more like, um, that like a snapshot, but stored outside of the storage pool. So inherently incremental, uh, inherently done, uh, ideally more efficiently. You know, with with some sort of diff calculation. You know, the, all, all of the sorts of things you would expect. Right. I mean, th so, this kind, kind of points to the fact that th this means many things, right? I mean, right. But that's that's why the first thing I was suggesting was a principles statement about what exactly we're trying to do with volume backups, which I think would, would, would answer that. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, we've, we've been looking at this quite a bit on the VMware side and with uh, our backup partners because mm -hmm. our, our traditional backup workflows have been take a snapshot and then, but that's strictly a local snapshot. That doesn't go anywhere except local storage. And then the backup application goes ahead and extracts the data and puts it into its, you know, its storage system and then deletes the snapshot. Um, so that's a completely different workflow than, for right. example, the EBS workflow or the Google workflow, where you say, hey, snap this, and the storage system says, okay, I got this. It's, it's someplace safe. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Right. Yeah, yes, so I, I back up to my mind. Right. Means the exactly oil. what the guy was talking about is for principles. I think we can cover both. Exactly. And I think, uh, and there's also some use cases for the data extraction in terms of data mobility. Okay, I mean, uh, even even accepting this, right, that the principles would clarify this volume backups and things like that, I still believe there is a clear distinction between the API level work as opposed to a more, more uh, let's call just the, uh, you know, a pro backup provider level work. Uh, consistency groups definitely require support from CSI. So just to be very, very uh, narrowly focused, we can ask what are all the things that CSI spec needs to support and you know start with those for example the consistency groups and things like that yeah that that gets the very bottom third of the stack which is certainly interesting but there's stuff in the middle that is also interesting like all the application snapshot stuff is probably completely out of scope of csi yeah 
So, so, you know, so that, was, that was kind of what we meant by reviewing the existing APIs was to go through and look at them in terms of, you know, as many different eyes and as many different workflows and use cases to say, this is what I need. Um, and things like consistency groups, you know, we've been talking about them, but it's like, what scale of consistency group do you need? Um, you know, building out a large scale, you know, multi-machine, multi-storage system consistency group is hard and it's cool but will will it actually solve a problem? And that's something we need to understand. Yeah, I, I, I sympathize with the, with the person who said we should focus on real CSI APIs, but it's, it's not like we haven't thought of this down at the CSI working group before. The, the problem is that we couldn't figure out what it meant or how to do it. And so I think maybe one of the outputs of this group could be a clearer uh, goal for, for the CSI working group to actually go go do because we know that it's a, it's a desirable thing we just don't know how to do it. So we need to works. yeah we need to know the whole workflow right so it's we can't we can't do bottom up we need to know uh, so how do we get this to work what are the uh, API needed in Kubernetes and what are the API we needed in CSI we need to look at this whole thing so so like for volume group. So we will need both. We will need the uh, Kubernetes API changes and also CSI changes. Oh, right. right. So in, in that sense, it looks to me that the data production workflows is probably the you know a high priority item in the in this whole list. Uh, the, uh, so yeah. So that that's definitely very important. That, that's like the high level thing. Definitely that that is very important, right? So that's actually why it's if you look at the in scope, right? So that's the first, right? So it's like understanding the the high level uh, how to do things. Uh, and then those are all individual topics, but of course each of them could be very big as well. Right. Yeah. I, I just want to add on top of what Andrew was saying. Uh -huh. when, we, when we say volume backup, uh, yeah, traditional volume backup may work as what they was describing. I'm sorry, the, the other person, I don't know your name, sorry. Uh, but we also need to think about how do we effectively can restore the backup into a warning, right? It's not a one-way thing, right? You can take as many backups as you wanted, but how, how do you incorporate all this stuff into a Kubernetes native construct is a very, very important thing we need to consider. Uh, taking all this into consideration, it may involve API changes. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, in this manner, we cannot simply say, hey, you're just taking a backup. It's really, really about, oh, I need to get my data back to the status. Uh, so just to have comment in the chat, uh, you determine the list of workflows and work from them. So, so the, yeah, so there are different levels of uh, backups of da data protection, right? So as suggested here, so uh, that will be like different levels of uh, workflows, right? So backup by individual volume, or backup application, backup at class level, those are all very different. Uh, let's see who, who put this comment, do you have any other uh, suggestions there? Uh, one comment I'd have at this point time at the, the group level is, do we have the right set of participants? It looks like we've got storage vendors and some DP vendors. And I was hoping or thinking that it would be good to get application or database vendors, you know, the Mongo, Cassandra type folks involved as well. Because a lot of these things, you know, we have to ask them, how are we going to effectively back up your application? That's a really good point. So do we know how to do reach out to them? You know, does anybody want to take that as an action item? I think Ina has already uh, started working on this. Ina, can you comment on that? So I did some research, uh, mostly, for example, for MongoDB. How do you actually, like, for example, when you want, when you want to back up a MongoDB cluster, the first thing you, you have to do is to pick the right replica to snapshot or, or backup. So, um, there's a lot of application specific logic things, uh, these kind of things. So we have to figure out. And um, so we don't have, currently have a standard API or, or um, controllers for doing these kind of things. So that, that they've said, it's better to also involve uh, database vendors yes, because they know better for like, you know, how to back up each type of databases in the most efficient way. So. There must be some application domain knowledge in in these that we have to incorporate. Uh, 
Yeah, the, the interesting question is whether we go the approach that we have pursued so far, which is to say these products all have commands for doing backup or for preparing yes. for a backup, and we all basically provide hooks for tickling those right. commands. I think their the approach might be actually saying, are there some primitives that we can expose that are new that these guys might sign up to using? I, I mean, I'm, I'm reaching here, but I'm, I'm thinking of sort of like, what's the Windows um, uh, thing? Not, not VSS. No, 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 no VSS. <laughs> I, I think but yes, it is VSS that but, I was... But yes, I, I know your idea. Your idea isn't, isn't a bad one, but so, <laughs> no VSS. <laughs> I think there are, there are two paths here. One is um, the basic features rely on full system level backup, and, but you have to know how to actually pick the right replica to backup in the first place. The second is how to actually support, support using application specific tools, like, you know, for example, um, Mongo DOM or, or mm, MySQL DOM. So these are two different tracks, I think. Yeah, and I think there's very much the topic of is the application involved in a backup or are there cases where the application is not, you know, we've, right. we've done crash consistent backups for a while. Mm -hmm. So what, yes. you know, is that valid? Is it valid at scale? Is mm -hmm. it something that, you know, our current tools can support? Um, Cause right now, you know, we don't have a consistency group uh, that goes, you know, multi pod or multi node right. really. And, yes. I, and we've been kind of, you know, on our side, on the VMware side, we've been debating this a lot. And we're kind of like, eh, maybe you don't really need that. You know, the database app should be able to handle some level of inconsistency. And then I started working through, well, wait a minute, how about, you know, multi-phase commit? If you actually have a distributed transaction, mm -hmm. the contract is all the nodes committed, right? And so if one of them's out of sync, somebody's unhappy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So we're getting close to the end of our window. I just want to make sure we know what we're going to be doing after this meeting and the beginning of next meeting. <laughs> is, yeah. is, are the future meetings gonna be in this time slot or do we have a different time slot? It's a different time. I, I sent out the meeting, but did you get it? It's on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. So basically the next meeting okay. will be 29th of January. Um, okay, so, so let's look at this. So we, uh, uh, so uh, at least we picked a few a few uh, items from this list, uh, and we have folks sign up for for them. Um, so, so, yeah. Let me ask a question. If I if I plan on on writing up some notes to propose a direction, and and assume other people also will want to do that, how should I make those available? Should I yeah. send to this working group alias? Yeah, yeah. So if you uh, so uh, you. You're going to use a Google Doc to put together something and send to this mailing list, and we can discuss. Uh, so we can we can have feedback over the email as well, and then discuss in the meeting. And then we can definitely have additional meetings. That's on a need basis. There's also a Slack channel, right? Oh yes, yes. So did, uh, did Evan, does Evan know? We already have a Slack channel, so maybe that actually that would be a. Um, more uh, direct one. So uh, we have a Slack you, panel just for this working group. Yes. Yes. Okay. If you go to the beginning of it's it's actually it's here. If you look at here, here. So it's a yeah. Great. Yeah. So, so, so Slack channels are good for real time and mm -hmm. synchronous answering questions, but for like design yeah. discussions, they need to be asynchronous. Like yeah, a, we, a, we definitely we do have to have other meetings because you only you know if you just type it's kind of <laughs> too slow, right? <laughs> but if you, uh, we I, I think that we, we do uh, looks like we have a lot of topics. We definitely need to have additional meetings uh, on a need basis. So um, for like let's. Uh, but but for design feedback, to, I would recommend email or edits to the Google Doc. And then the Slack channel is a good way yeah. to quickly ask and answer questions. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so start uh, with uh, your design doc in a Google doc, Google doc, and then you can send that through the Slack and also on email. Then people can start adding adding those comments on the on the doc itself. So that will be at least that's saved, right? Email sometimes uh, <laughs> it's hard to find them, and then. Um, 
then we can uh, we can arrange our additional meetings as needed. Um, okay, so um, so Andrew, I see you're going to start this. Uh, you're going to write up something to start with some principles on one of backups. Is that uh, what you have said? Yeah, up? that's 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 my thought. I'll definitely okay. have by next week. Yeah. Okay, and then I know there are uh, you know quite a few people are of course interested in this, right? Yep. Uh, this is uh, no land ban or for. interested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yes, yeah, so start that, and then we can all uh, um, give feedback on that. And then data populator uh, is it Ben? You're going to start? You want to start something? Who you already started something? On the data I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a proposal for for 118, and depending on what kind of feedback I get, we may need to do more work. Or consider other alternatives, or maybe people will agree with my yeah, suggestion. Yeah, if, if you want one one eighteen, that is really really tight, and then you probably yeah you need to submit a cap really quick, I think, um, yeah. because uh, otherwise, <laughs> yeah. So maybe yeah, that, that's up to you. You put together a Google Doc first, and then submit a cap. Or it, Ben, it sounds like that that your proposal is basically what you described, which is to allow basically unvalidated CRD references in the data source. Yes. Have you um, talked with any of the folks that are going to be doing the approval on that cap ahead of time? Because that, that is likely to either be a dead in the water or a reasonable approach. I, it doesn't seem like <laughs> a lot of battle ground. Yes, yes. So uh, I, those are the two outcomes that I am anticipating. Um, and uh, no, I, I haven't. If you have the names of the people, that I could maybe uh, feel them out or give them a, a preview. Well, I, I, certainly, Tim yeah. on our side would be one of the guys. <laughs> but but I, I, I think that maybe any reticence that we've had to that approach in the past has just been around not knowing what the implications of that would be. So I want to have a POC that can demonstrate this is not as scary as it might seem. It actually works perfectly well. And try to get people more comfortable with the idea. Yeah, so Tim was the one who uh, approved the original data source field. He was the one who wanted us to make it very, very strict. So it's probably the good person yeah, to I, talk to. Him is the guy you probably have to convince. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and Saad already know, right? Saad, Saad seems to uh, be okay uh, because he knows that's what's what you want to do. So because Saad, Saad needs to approve it as well. He hasn't put too much comment because the cap is not there yet. We, we discussed yeah. it with the idea around, but that's... Uh -huh. but, he, but he knows what, yeah, what he that knows. means. Yeah, yeah, so he knows that. Okay. Um, okay, then uh, the popular what in group I'm working on cap. I need to get that one. <laughs> Wrap it up. I need to submit that one. Um, and then we can we can discuss. I'm I'm actually trying to really submit a cap because we do have a, a Google Doc for that one. I can put that uh, in, in our agenda well, talk. Huh? Well, no, no, no. I don't think this one will get into 1.18. I don't, I don't believe so. It's going to take a long time. Um, okay. But I, I'm just saying that I, I need to put together a cap. But we do have some Google Doc, right? It's mm -hmm. been there for a long time. Uh, so it's probably doesn't help to just go through that again. Maybe just uh, let me just put together a cap and then we can look at it. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be very tight for four and topics not, not not oh, i'm not talking about like we were going to go through all of them yeah in uh in next meeting and, and so we're going to list everything that we want to go through but then we are running out of time then <laughs> we are not going to cover them right uh, so and also depending on the priority if there is a deadline if you want to get something when they're eating then probably we should review that first okay oh maybe yeah. based on maturity yeah, yeah. Uh, and then application snapshot, that's Inan's one. This one, of course, is a very interesting one. There's already a cap. Um, yeah, I'm not saying that we, we need to uh, review all of them in, in my meeting. It's just impossible, right? So usually, like, we we schedule, like, a one-hour review meeting for one cap, and then we couldn't even finish. Like, I was doing this at uh, Warren House review the other day. It took one hour. We're halfway through. <laughs> so, um yeah, definitely need a lot of time to go through those things. Uh, okay, so we already have a lot. Oh, oh and Dave uh, signed up for this uh, uh, high-level discussion, data protection work for this one, of course, uh, you know. I, 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 we doubt, need a... Dave, I, I doubt us two can come up with some nice cap next week. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, not saying that. I'm just uh, not saying that we have to finish everything yeah. uh, by 
that's just too soon. This is a very big one, this document. That I think this one you also need the, you, you, do you need to have a, um, input from the whole working group, right? So not just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I would just share some very initial ideas with Dave and just see whether there anything common we can bring to the discussion to the door of the working group. Something like that. Yeah, and, and if anybody else wants to put their oar in, you know, let us know now. And I would say, you know, we'll have a little meeting or something next week and we'll put together an outline of a document. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. The, Just to uh, uh, add, add my name in as well. So I will. Could, yeah. Can Kent. somebody post these different things on uh, Google Docs or something like, okay, <laughs> like that sure. so we can yeah, kind of so sign up if we want to? And uh, the other thing is um, you're recording this. Will it be posted somewhere? Yeah, it should be. So I need to figure that out because right now the I think the link it does not work. Uh, but I recorded it, so I need to uh, ask people to figure out how to get this one posted somewhere. Yeah, but we should uh, definitely okay. will figure this out. Those are all logistics when forming a new group, so yeah. we'll we'll know that. Uh, one last thing, I would like to uh, ask a favor from everybody who signed up uh, a task. To supply, so to supply your email in this working group data, data protection working group doc, so that in case anyone wants to reach out, they can find you. Oh, and yep. also join the Slack. Yeah, that'd be great. Slack yeah. will be this, this doc a quick way. Somewhere? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. it, it's shared via the uh, okay. the invitation, the meeting invitation. Everybody okay. should have access. Yeah, if you look at it's it's all in the agenda. Can everyone see the agenda doc? This is all in the agenda doc. So yep. you go look at yeah everything's here. So, uh, so if you click the first link, that will bring you there. The charter, uh, charter is also listed down, down there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and channel, join the mailing list too. <laughs> well, oh yeah, join join the yeah. Name. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because I put uh, short names in the uh, in the meeting notes. Okay. So okay. Uh, so I will uh, list list all of this uh, uh, the couple of topics that we we. We decided to to start with, and then, um, and then people can add their name there if they're interested in working on something. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, and thank uh, you, everyone. Okay. And great job, Shing and Shenzhen, um, in getting the group set up and pushing all of this through the approvals process. This is a really good job. Thank you, guys. That's good. <laughs> good. 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 All right. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. What? Uh, thanks you too for being the ground. Yeah, so got a lot of things to do. Okay, thanks yeah. everybody. All right, thank you. All bye. Right, bye bye. bye, -bye. bye.